back up shore. First trip out here on a charter in a couple months. It's been a while, but uh, we're on the old 37. If you're wondering why, we're replacing some gear cases on the 42. A little bit of bad luck and lost two of them, but there was 2,750 hours on one and 2,808 hours on the other, so 2,800 hours on the lower units. Can't complain about that. We're also gonna repower the 42 and we're gonna get a brand new boat here later this year, in the next uh, four or five weeks, we had a new 42 Freeman coming, so we're getting her for that. But anyhow, we got Ronnie here, we got Jesse, we got Hux. We're going offshore, see if we can't catch some Mahi, two in the middle of deep dropping. Royal 37 today, the water damage with the twin 425, so let's see what happens. The chum bag came off the string, brand new. Our 10 and 12 foot nets are missing. We got a brand new eight footer this morning. Hopefully we catch a few to catch some tunas. That's a training net for children. That's the only fine mesh we had. You know, you need a really small mesh and the bait's smaller. The bait's racing around, but well, this will be our best throw yet. We just need enough to do a drift or two for some blackfin tunas. There's a lot of jellyfish too. The moon jellies are here, so we don't want to catch those, but it's good. Well, we got one jelly. Well, there's only six to seven to We'll get that jellyfish out of there because he'll kill all your bait. That is the old moon jelly. He will sting you and there's no fun when you're diving or snorkeling either. Sadie got Sadie got, got the other day at the sun chill, the light I was hanging out, and so did Madison about a week later. We got a bigger net from Relentless. Let's see if we can catch a couple hundred more real quick. It's a crush. If you go on a charter, you guys go bait fishing. We spent an hour to catch bait. We just got him good one throw. There's like 200, 300 baits in there, so that's what we needed. So when you go fishing, you have to catch live bait a lot of days. You gotta be patient. Top the hump here. It's a big underwater seat mount. It comes up from 700 up to about 400 feet. So we're gonna chum with these pilchers and see if the tunas will come up eating them and then we'll start spinning rods back at them. Yeah. Well hopefully we'll get them up really close. Sometimes you get them where they're literally like five feet in the boat with big that way. We're tight. Yeah. Off to a triple header. Two in the oh, bite this morning. We got three on. Go over four. Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's coming, buddy. That'll be tuna for dinner. I'll, I'll feel a five banger. We got five on, guys. <laughs> They're biting this morning. Oh, that legitimately is just like a giant There you go. Hux is on the board. Is that your first black for tuna? Never caught a tuna. We got Hux's first tuna right here, you guys. I think I found a tuna. It's only seven pounds or so, eight pounds. You're right. What right. well, we call it football. Take a step backwards, Hux is going to go in front of you. Bleeding them out. There's the tuna heart. So sometimes you can rip that out there and all the blood will pump out. Do you want to eat a tuna heart? Not really. Are you sure? Yes. It's a delicacy in some places. Not this place. Not here, though. It's funny. You catch all this bait and you just throw it all over. All that works, throw all the bait over. But we're catching him. Hey, we gotta chop him up. <laughs> he might have caught a lot more bait than us and let his bar his net, but we beat him here. That's numero trace. Oh, that's a pretty fish. That is yeah. Oh, he's striping all right. Skipjack tuna, so a little different than the black fins. Actually, good if you eat them fresh. A lot of people make a tuna salad with them, but oh boy. Hucks. They're wiggling on me. Really good bait, though. Whoa. We got another decent blackfin in the wival there bleeding out. Hucks that one on that got off. We got another bait going out there. I think we're gonna have to reset here. Kind of get off the hump. We're still marking some at 100 though. We've been chumming, we've been throwing a lot of that live bait over. And you work that hard to throw it all over, but you gotta do that to get the school tuna up. So we probably threw over a couple hundred baits so far, but I think we got four or five blackfins and a couple skipjacks. We still got enough to do a couple more rounds and we'll live chum them. Relentless is throwing heavy. 
You know, they were next to us, they crushed a bit earlier. He's trolling up a couple, but hopefully they'll get them busted and we can get the good drone shots that and show you guys uh, a feeding frenzy. Yeah. Tuna on board. All right, well, I'm just... I got my bait in, but I still have about 400 yards of line out. Mm -hmm. uh, you were trying to tangle him up to get him to lose his fish, weren't you? No. Yeah, you want to catch the most. That's my man. Yeah. You can always cut the hook off if that's easier, and we can always just kind of retie it. We got five or six black fins. We got a couple skipjacks. We want to save some bait in case we find some mahi, you know, dolphin, dorado, whatever you want to call them. In case they don't want to bite the dead bait, so we have some live bait in there. So we're going to keep running offshore, but first step, first spot, mission success. Ron said I talk too fast. I think I speak another language. I just speak really fast, apparently. Swahili. <laughs> and no one can understand me. I'm not doing much. Just get a few gaffers cut away. Some birds working. Could be on dolphin fish, aka mahi, aka dorado. Hucks, come back here, buddy. Hark, it's a mahi, but smaller. We made it to the deep water. We can do a little deep dropping. Just doing a couple big baits, a little squid as well. And a little bit of luck, we'll get a big giant grouper. No luck, we'll snipe bottom and break off. We don't want that. The consensus is I talk way too fast. The people have spoken, they have spoken. YouTube has spoken. My father has spoken, so I'm gonna try to slow down for you so you guys can understand me a little bit. It's been a quick five years of me speaking very fast. You're good to go. I have to go right towards us there, but you can see the lead bounce the bottom, that's what we want. They're tight, come over here, buddy. Come over here, this could be us, he's a big one, he's pulling. Let's let him keep doing his thing, but if he starts coming up and the rod gets slack, then you can speed it up some, okay? Don't yeah. push a drag up just a little bit. This could be our grouper, guys. It could be a shark, hopefully it's not. We don't want a shark. Kind of shark like no, not out here, it'd be a Cuban night shark, a night shark. That's, this could be us, you guys. This could be a big giant grouper, or a barrel. Oh, he's moving quick. All right, close your bail, wind fast. Is it on? We're going back down for drop number two. We got one mahi off that piece of bamboo. There's another one there, but we stung him, which we had him off for saying he jumped. We felt the hook, he came off and tried to get him on another bait, but couldn't trick him. Anyhow, we're going back down. See if we get another big bottom bite. Could be a barrel fish, could be a beard fish, could be anything. Could be a mermaid. As long as it's not a mermaid, we'll be in good shape. You never know what you're gonna catch when you're deep dropping. That's the good thing about it, you know? And usually most stuff you catch is very good eating. Might be an Alfonsino. Could be, it's a really uh, exotic deep water fish that we just catch a few of. We just gotta make sure, sometimes you hit the rig on the rod and you break it off. And you lose that fish and the whole rig. You don't want that. There he comes. We got color. Here he comes. Oh, yeah. See the air coming out? Big queen. That's a big queen snapper. Oh, he's going to be a beauty, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Queen, yeah. Big, big queen. Look at this queen snapper, you guys. What a beauty. Look at that snapper. Look at that snapper. Holy moly, that's a giant. Yeah, though. Mike's been fishing oh, my spot. Man. Look at this queen snapper. Whoa. Look at the colors in him. Uh, yeah. That is a big queen snapper. Thousand feet of water, absolutely beautiful fish there. That's oh, what we wanted. Puck, what do you think of that? Pretty, that right? Insane, yeah. You wouldn't think a fish that deep would be so pretty. No. Oh, he's not happy. <laughs> At least I saved it. That was a welcome surprise. Don't catch many queens here. Mike said he's caught a couple here before. I've never caught one on this spot, but you never know. That's the cool thing about deep dropping. But some of the prettiest colors you can uh, get in a fish that bright red, really good eating. So we got dinner. Number 
We snagged bottom. We're getting rid of our banana peel. I broke off, so we're gonna wrap up the deep drop and we're gonna go try to catch some more mahis and work away in shore a little bit. Some weed here. We're on the mahi hunt. You can burn a lot of fuel looking for mahis. So we're burning some fuel right now, but all these weed patches, see if we can find any. There's a couple birds working here. They follow the mahi because the mahi, you know, push up the bait fish like flying fish and whatnot. And then the birds will follow and eat the little flying fish. We'll see, hopefully there'll be some fish here. There's a school of fish here. They're not big, you know, they're schoolies we call them, but hopefully there'll be a few keepers. Um, a few boats found some schools today with some keeper fish in it. I know Relentless did, I think Endeavor City was picking away at them, but you just gotta pick through a lot of them to catch your keepers. 20 inches to the fork of the tail. One or two more, yeah, but I don't know if they're keepers. Big piece of bamboo. Could make our day if there's any fish on it. Could make us or break us. The bird floating on it, we'll see. <laughs> Old Jack's on the bear hook. No Mahi's here though, unfortunately. We're gonna do a couple deep drops with the hand crank rods. And uh, that'll probably wrap up the day. So if we catch a couple more fish and we'll race back home. Here we go, rod number one is going down. The three bottom rods are down. We're trying to get a tile fish or a grouper. Jesse's smoking us, he's hooked up. Deep water bottom fish. No bites from here. Talks yet. We're up to a double. Ooh, it might be a grouper, you never know. Could be a big tile, but nice group would be nice. Oh, we're tight now. We're tight. There's a tile, I'm going back down for more. I'm greedy. Look at what you want, Nick. It's tight, sucker. I was running with it. Fish out. I'm going back down for more. Get, get tight, fish, come on. Short bumps, baby. We're going back down. I don't think it is. <laughs> There's something on there. You're pulling too hard, buddy. We broke off the big grouper, I think, yep. Oh, it just came off. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Right, we're going to back up and get him. So his just came off. There. Oh, we got a surface. Yeah, we got a lot of them. We got them. There you go. There's a yellow-head grouper. Been fishing all season to catch one. We finally caught one. We almost got away right there. Hey, Nichols. These are pretty rare, right? Yeah, yeah. We got one. Nice yellow edge. Way to go. Uh, we had a bigger one on that we broke off, unfortunately, but we got one there. Look at that. That's a big grouper. Wait, that the big grouper just floated up. We broke him off. He floated to the top. We're backing up to get him. Oh, and Nick just got super excited, folks. We've been fishing all, all season. We've been out here four or five times trying to make a yellow edge grouper video. We haven't got him. Double header right here. There could be three on here. This is a big one here. He's 20 plus. He said they weren't biting, but we found him. Look at that group there. Yeah! Nice. They weren't lying. They said the boy was good luck. Woo! A little bad luck when we broke him off, but he floated up. The rig's gone, you know, sank down to the sinker, but that is a beautiful yellow edge group. That is a Isn't that cool? Like we were just talking about those fish, you know, his broke off, and I was so frustrated at this point because we knew 99% chance it was a big yellow edge grouper, but it was still down about 100 feet, but it had enough air in it from coming up from the deep water. You know, their swim bladder ruptures and it pushes their stomach out and fills with air. And he came up floating to the top and we got him in the boat. Double header yellow edge, the first drift. And we got one more fish on here. It could be another grouper, it could be a tile, no telling. Ron is coaching Ronnie. Do you think we can write a country song about this fish? The Rons? Uh, sure. Well, I wrote one yesterday. You did? Yeah. So Ron's the writer and Ronnie's the singer? Yeah, fishy, fishy in the sea. <laughs> won't you, won't you come to me? <laughs> yeah. Come and bite. Put right there, Ron. For RD. We gave him the smallest, oh, the smallest rod here with the most line out to make it oh, challenging for him. That's the first one to We're run. trying to end on a good yeah. note, though. <laughs> we'll see, though. Hux, Hux is on fire today. I mean, hey, did you get that? That was my first line. It was? Yeah. Not bad. No. That's a cruel joke, Captain Nick. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. You're about halfway there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> my dad. Instagram. What we got? Okay. Tile fish? We got a grouper and a tile? I think one grouper and one tile, maybe. There you go. Oh, a yellow oh, grouper oh, and a tile. Oh. On the mini rod, you didn't think it could be done. Ronnie Dunn just did it. We got dinner. 
you go. Look at that. <laughs> One drop. Oh. Big tile fish. Decent yellow edge grouper. We're in good shape. That drift just made our day. Three yellow edge grouper. One really nice one, like a 20 pounder, a couple of mediums, a nice blue line tile. We done fishing, you guys wanna do one more drop? <laughs> the kid won't stop. Hux, he wants more? We'll go try to get more there. Let's see what happens, so. Yeah, let's go do one more. We'll do one more here. They all blast, a bite on every rod. Big giant queen snapper today. Biggest one we caught all year, and a uh, few tunas, a couple of mahis, like Osa Mahi, and just that last trip that really made the day. We got him? Okay, you can do Oh, I'm getting a bite too. Oh, swing and a miss. Hux is hooked up from Jesse's on here in the middle, and I just had to buy the mini rod. We were gonna go in after one drip, but the kid said, Can we make one more drop? I said, Sure. You tell you he likes fishing, so do we. But you got color on yours back there, too. They're both coming up. I think we got a tile fish up here, I believe, and it looks like another big group of us. Oh. oh, yeah, I got color. Yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah. cow, Hux. Yeah, awesome. That's a big yellow blue line there. He's a real nice one. And he's got another nice yellow edge grouper on there. We're gonna call it a day now. We got our quota. We're good. The yellow edge slayers. And another oh, yellow two. trooper. He ate two baits. There's two hooks in his mouth, but we'll take it. <laughs> Dude, you made me do that for real, right? He's so majestic. <laughs> oh, that's majestic right there. These are Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Majestic. Tile fish and grouper, double header. <laughs> you spined me. Oh, yeah. I got him. <laughs> I've made it back to Bud Murray's Marina. This could be you. There's like 17 offshore charter boats here that go out there fishing 365 days a year, depending on the weather. They can go any time of year, different types of fish, different time of year. There's 25 inshore guides, which we call the backcountry. Come on down here and check it out. There's house boats to stay on, there's hotel room, there's a couple of small houses on property. This is a uh, you know, summertime and we had a great day. On the internet could be 25 or 30, but this is real life, not just the internet. Well, part of it's real life. Part of it's on the internet. What oh, beautiful fish there. First legitimate chart I've done in two months. And probably the last for a while. But we're gonna clean him up here. And they got big scales, they got big spines with a dorsal fin. You can check that fin out there. So you don't want to get these in you. But we're just gonna take our time here and knock too many scales off. And he's full of air, so the air bladder just blew. And I've not had queen snapper since I can remember. It's been a long time. But I'm gonna take some fish with them for dinner. We're gonna take some home. Madison's back down here helping out the summer with the girls now. So we're gonna have probably queen snapper, maybe a little grouper, some tuna. Maybe some tuna by the pool. We're just going right over those rib bones there. Just like that, gonna lay that down there. Some of these queens that are small, you can do them whole, but this wouldn't be a little too big to do whole in the grill. You take a very big grill. But his head and throat could be good too. We may save his head and throat for some of the friends around town here. They might do like a fish soup with them, you know, make a fish stock. There's the filet. Still a little bit of bone there, so let's see, let's knock this off. Like that. Flip this over here, and we just want to get this bone out of the center out of it. So we're just going to cut that deep red out of there. That's the bloodline. There's a center bone, too. And it'll be the same thing on the other side there as well. And then we're going to do uh, some of those tunas up there. That's queen snapper. That's going to be delicious. See you guys back in the kitchen. Just wrapped up our fishing trip with the Dunn family here. Ronnie, Hux, the Jesse. Dunn, Dunn boys. The Dunn clan, as they call them. How'd you guys enjoy Bud and Mary? Did you have fun? It was so awesome. It was fantastic. Who caught the most fish? This guy. This guy. This Lewis guy right White. here. Who caught the biggest barracuda today? Oh, I this guy. Oh, how'd that happen, buddy? You thought he could just write and sing songs. He can catch barracudas too. Yeah, but who got the big grouper yesterday? I did. He did. Big old giant yellow edge grouper. You guys caught a bunch of fish in the backcountry with my brother Rick, Snook, Tarpin, Goliath grouper. Did you like anyone better going offshore or inshore, or like them both? I liked them both uh, equally. That was really fun. They're all full of, full of action. Cap, you did a good job. What'd you think? Cap was hopping. You know, they're all different, but they're all awesome. Yeah. yeah. So you Fantastic. enjoyed them all? Really yeah. Awesome. We all, they also did some snorkeling today. Our friend Ron Madra was here with them. They've been friends for a long time. He said, can we catch a hogfish? And that's kind of a hard fish to catch. But Mermaid Sarah jumped in, swam around with a bait, 
And after about 20 minutes, Huck's had his first ever hogfish. Yeah. Yeah, cool, see, right? yeah, yeah, you got to see the, the footage of it. It was an Sarah. inch off of being a keeper. So Putting the been a hook keeper in the for hogfish. an inch longer. Yeah. Yep. So, and she doesn't do that for everybody, but if she likes the guys enough, she'll do it. You know, we call it tip security. So that's what we were doing. And now I heard you got a YouTube channel as well, I did. right? I What's the channel name? We got to give him a shout um, out. So here. it's called Kicking It with HD. And um, what do you got on there? Fishing videos, hunting, um, hanging out? Pretty much hanging out. Well, that'll have them. So if you guys want to check it out, I'm gonna go check it out when I get home. Yeah. We'll put this. We'll put a link below in the video description. So we got a double of subs. We gotta get the subs up there. So. <laughs> well, I enjoy you guys coming down here. It's a pleasure fishing with you all, and yeah. hopefully you guys. Be, are you guys gonna come back? Yeah, you oh, yeah. Be, yeah. We'll be back. We'll be back, back again. Yes. We'll be back. Yeah. They said they're coming back. So guys, come on down here to Bud and Mary's. Check it out. This is grouper here, nice and white. That yellow is some of the whitest fish we catch. I mean, beautiful. This is a big old chunk of that queen snapper. You can see the difference in color. That grouper's whiter. This is gonna be good too. And then we're gonna do pan sauteed. That was a great day with Ronnie, Jesse, Hux. Ronnie Brooks and done one of the biggest country music bands out there, so he's a superstar. We'll never know, you know, normal guy fishing with him and the, the kid there, the grandson, his grandson was tearing him up. He was on fish after fish and really fun time. So great group of guys. But let's get cooking because I'm hungry. So we're gonna cook the fish two different ways. Sarah's gonna do some, some butter. Some bacon bits, maybe a little fresh garlic it looks like, or minced garlic. And I'm gonna do some with some lemon garlic seasoning and some lemon olive oil. A little bit healthier, not so healthy. Bacon and butter, but bacon is better. So let's get cooking here and let's see which one tastes better. The queen snapper is pretty thick. So we're gonna, I guess you could say butterfly. We're just gonna cut it in half to thin it out. That way it cooks a little bit quicker and easier, more like the same rate as the grouper. Both of these are top of the line eating fish. The deep drop fish are, in my opinion, the best eating fish that we catch down here. Look at that grouper. Usually I put a coat of a, like a base coat on here, like a binder, I guess you would call it, like some olive oil, but I want to try it without it tonight. I'm sure it'll be good no matter what, but we'll see which one turns out better. Ooh, that's hot. The closest one I have. It'll have to work. And here's a nice little appetizer. We have got a bunch of fresh black tuna. We took two loins of it. This was just half of one fish, and we had six of them. And you can see how much sashimi we get there from it. But this is gonna be delicious. This will be our appetizer, plus part of dinner. I'm going for the first bite, you know. And when you make this really cold, you know, in the freezer, it makes it easier to cut it. So she cut it while it's firm, and I put it back in there just to keep it cold, but when it's cold, it tastes a lot better. Super smooth, goes down. And years ago, you know, I didn't eat a lot of sashimi or raw fish, but I actually do enjoy it now, tuna and wahoo especially. So if you ever get a blackfin tuna, bleed them out, ice them down really good, try that. Oh, that looks good. So this is a pan sauteed with some olive oil and nothing fancy, just some seasoning on it. That one's starting to flake apart there and you can see it kind of curling too. Hers curled over as well. Probably because it's fresh and hot. We'll give that another two minutes or so and we'll be eating dinner here in no time. This looks good. And you can see this fish, you know it's done because it's breaking apart and flaking apart. This is the queen snapper here. Queen snapper is actually a tad firmer than some of the other fish that we eat. So you can tell this is a grouper here all flaking apart. Look how, look at that. That is so soft. That is gonna be delicious. We're gonna let that cool off. Sarah's finishing up her batch. I took the rest of yours. Yeah, I should the rest of mine, that's okay. So we got tuna, appetizer. We got yellow edge grouper, queen snapper, two different styles, and a bunch of rice. We're about to go eat dinner. Claire is devouring it. Claire, did you eat the fish? Did you like it? Is it yummy? Now Go you on. Rice? I Sushi. thought Charles may never come visit me again, but he's back. Unfortunately. He lives on the street, so he just walks. And around. they, so Gare and Madison devour the tuna sushi, the sashimi. They eat all that. It was good, right? So, <laughs> so when people say black tuna are no good, are they lying? No, they, they are lying. They are lying, right? That was really good. So it's delicious. delicious. So if you catch black tuna and you never had it raw, Get it nice and cold, put it in the freezer, you know, dry it off with paper towels. Get in there, get it cold, slice it up, and eat it. It's delicious. Mm. 
And now it's the moment of truth. Did the lemon garlic seasoning outdo the bacon and butter? Sarah says no way. I'm doing grouper first. Yellow edge grouper. I think Hux, Hux caught this one probably. It's good. Plain white meat, deep dropping. Kind of peppery, I will say that season got some pepper. And this is Sarah's bacon and butter one. Tastes like bacon. Let me try the queen snapper. This is the queen snapper. You can just see it's a firmer meat. It's like garlic. A little different. It's got olive oil, garlic, bacon, and a little bit of butter in the pan. It's not, it's not like butter smothered in bacon. <laughs> Let's try that queen snapper. I take it They're both good. One. I like bacon. The grouper is definitely the best in my opinion. Bacon. The queen snapper is good too, but the grouper oh, is just softer is and a more flaky meat yeah, here. Claire, which one do you like better? Who's going to be the next chef at Papa Joe's? Claire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can beat bacon. Bacon is cheating. Garlic. She cheated. Well, bacon. Which one do you think? Bacon, Charles? Bacon. This one's good, but bacon. You can't compete with bacon. I agree. I think so. Wait, did I answer that wrong? The lemon one. <laughs> it's good. The lemon garlic one. What do you guys think? Are they both good or do you like the bacon better? I think they're both good, but I like the lemon garlic better. You do? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I but better. I like I I like lemon. I do too, I think. So. You do? We got two people now. Gary and Madison on my side. Claire, they're both super good. Claire could be the deciding factor. Or maybe Sadie is. She's eating salad. Claire's She's eating salad. She's a giraffe. You want to eat a fish? Ow. Now that's the grouper that I caught today. 500 and something feet of water. It's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the lemon garlic pepper the is a little peppery and spicy. I didn't think it was that spicy. Well, that didn't work. I guess she's going for the bacon. Claire liked hers. There's nothing. That left. was the bacon one I gave her. You did? Did you like the bacon? Try one more bite. Let's see if she thinks it's spicy too. Spicy? Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> bacon wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, She's gonna go the trap. I've never seen <laughs> that settles that. Do not feed your kids peppery food. But they were both good, just to be honest with you. <laughs> Anyhow, a great day there. Took a country music legend fishing with his son, his grandson. Hux did a great job. Are they spicy? Do you give, forgive me? Do you forgive mm. me? You gonna go get your grouper window, Daddy? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anyhow, hope you all enjoyed that video. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. Come on down to Mud Mary's. Check it out. Uh, I'm going to be here with the Rugrat tonight. We'll see you all next time.